Okay, so use postulates and diagrams. Um, we learned a few postulates back um, in chapter one. Those would be on pages nine through 25. That's numbers one through four. Um, this is just how the book numbers them. These aren't exactly, you know, there's no geometry number five postulate. It's just how the book numbers them. Um, but you can use these numbers when you're identifying them in your answers. Okay, so that's what makes them helpful. So you know, I am going to ask you to write all of these down, um, but let's start with number five. So number five says, through any two points there is, exists exactly one line, okay? And we can always kind of picture that if we have two points, we can always draw a line through it. But there is only one line that goes through those two points, okay? If there's another line that goes over it, it's basically the same line right on top of it, okay? Six, a line contains at least two points. So, again, we've been using if-then form. If you have two points, then the line contains those two points at least, okay? So a line obviously is a whole bunch more points, but a line contains at least two points, okay? Number seven, if two lines intersect, then their intersection is exactly one point, okay? So, again, two intersecting lines. We remember what this looks like. They are always going to intersect at one point, okay? And again, if we remember postulates, these seem pretty simple. It's because postulates are pretty much just real basic statements, right, that we can easily prove. So number eight, through any three non-collinear points, there exists exactly one plane. So remember, the book kind of gives this weird shape for a plane, and remember, non-collinear means they do not lie on the same line. So as long as you have three points that are non-collinear, they're gonna exist on one plane, okay? Number nine, says a plane contains at least three non-collinear points, and the same exact drawing we can use for that. If we have, it's just the opposite of what this one has. If we have three non-collinear points, there has to be one plane that contains all three, okay? Postulate number 10 says if two points lie in a plane, then the line containing, and I think I misspelled containing there, containing them lies on the plane, okay? So again, if we draw a plane, remember you have to imagine it as being a flat surface just like this board here. If two points lie in a plane, well then we can put two points on that plane then the line containing them lies on the plane. Well, if I can draw the line through those two points, it's obviously that line is on the plane, okay? Number 11, if two planes intersect, then their intersection is a line, okay? So if two planes intersect, and this one is kind of hard to draw, but let's see what I can do here. If you can kind of remember that it looked kind of funky, kind of like this where these two planes intersect is a line. So there's a line that goes right here, goes through those two planes. And so you can imagine if they're intersecting where my fingers cross, that would be a line, okay? So all of these postulates that we just learned, um, they're real simple statements, but basically how you're gonna be using them is you're gonna to have to look at a diagram and try and either use this statement to prove something or look at the statement and then prove it with a drawing. So either you're gonna to have to look at some writing and draw something out using these postulates or you're gonna to have to look at a diagram and look at your postulates and prove something that way. But either way, with these postulates and with the drawings that I gave you, we should be able to do our homework, okay? Good luck.